Russia's conflict in Ukraine, and the possibility of the war-torn country joining the Security Alliance are the top topics on the agenda, as the chiefs of NATO nations arrive in Vilnius today for two days of talks. As a result of Russia's illegitimate annexation of Crimea in 2014 and its subsequent large-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of last year, Kiev views membership as the strongest deterrence against further Russian attacks. However, Putin and the Kremlin have long cited NATO's eastward expansion as one of the reasons they first decided to invade. This past weekend, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden claimed that Ukraine is not yet prepared to join NATO, claiming that the Security Alliance must first put an end to its conflict with Russia before inviting Kiev to join. However, nations in Eastern Europe and the Baltics, whose borders are far closer to the whores of the conflict, are determined to present Ukraine with a precise entrance plan at the summit in Lithuania. In order to better understand what NATO membership for Ukraine would entail, and if it would assist the country achieve peace, or have disastrous effects, Malin Line spoke to a number of specialists. Expert on Russia and lead researcher at RAN Europe, John Kennedy, outlined the significance of uniting against Putin's bloody invasion. The claim that Russia invaded Ukraine in retaliation for NATO expansionism has a significant fault, according to one analysis of Russia's explanation for the conflict in Ukraine, despite the fact that NATO has clearly grown since it was founded, most recently with the accession of Finland and presumably Sweden, it has done so democratically, with each member state electing to join the group of nations of their own free will. NATO and the West must continue to support Ukraine in its war against Russia to demonstrate that armed expansionism into sovereign countries will not be tolerated, and that the future of Europe must be determined by these countries, not the Kremlin, said one expert. By contrast, Russian expansionism is historically imperialist, undemocratic, and conducted by FUS. However, a number of analysts concurred that until the conflict is over, NATO is very unlikely to invite Ukraine. There are significant risks with any decision NATO makes, but DIA, Gavin Hall of the University of Strathclyde who specialises in NATO and security institutions, said. I suspect it will seek to find language that enables sufficient wiggle room, without a firm commitment, but reasserting that Ukraine will join NATO. The conviction that Russia will immediately stop all hostile activity in Ukraine would have to be strong enough for Ukraine to be accepted or have its membership declared at Vilnius. I don't think so. Kennedy continued, saying that it would be cut before the horse to suggest NATO membership to Biden and the leaders of other nations while a sizable portion of Ukrainian territory is still under dispute. The security of the alliance would be compromised if Ukraine were to join while four parts of the country remain effectively under Russian influence. In such a case, NATO would be perceived as unable to ensure the security of its borders as Russia would be actively occupying areas of a NATO nation. And according to Dia, Martin Smith, senior lecturer in defence and international affairs at the Royal Military Academy and Hearst, Russia has been careful to avoid actions against Poland and the Baltic states 
For instance, that might run the risk of NATO invoking its collective defense provisions throughout the current war. After a negotiated conclusion to the war, Ukraine joining NATO should broaden that deterrent impact to include its own security and territory. Regardless of whether the conflict is over, Geopolitical expert for the Atlantic Council Alp Sevam Lissoy remained more hopeful about Ukraine joining NATO soon. When all the pieces come together, what we see are the foundations of a new NATO partner and a country that will be admitted into NATO not only for the security of Ukraine but for the national security of all of us within the Transatlantic Alliance. The official said, I believe that it will undoubtedly happen soon. The near future, according to me, is during the next 12 to 16 months Ukraine joining NATO. DR. Hall responded to the question of what would occur if Ukraine were to join NATO while actively engaged in conflict with Putin's forces on Ukrainian soil. Best case, Ukraine joins and Russia ceases military operations. But the likelihood of this happening is 0.01%. Instead, allowing Ukraine to join before the war is over runs the risk of pushing Putin to use the nuclear arsenal if Russia is forced into an all-out war with the combined power of all NATO countries. The worst scenario, according to Dia Hall, is that Russia conducts a tactical nuclear attack on Kiev due to Ukraine's membership in NATO, although this is just 0.01% likely. The truth is that there is no best case or worst case scenario. Rather, there is a muddled situation in which previous declarations are inadvertently limiting actions to come. The main disadvantage is the possibility of an escalation, said Professor Neil McFarlane, an expert on Russia in international relations at Oxford University. Putin's potential response is hardly contested. Nobody wants to perish in a nuclear war, I believe that much. But Sevam Lissoy provided a more upbeat assessment. Ukraine is being supported rather appropriately by NATO member nations, he said. I'm not concerned about the Russian response when it comes to Ukraine. The formalization of our help, support, and military cooperation with Ukraine under a more organized framework would result from their joining NATO. Everyone who lives near Ukraine, both domestically and internationally, would undoubtedly welcome a peace supported by NATO. Another benefit of Ukraine joining NATO, according to McFarlane, is that it might convince Putin that messing around with neighbors does not end well. Kennedy, however, ruled out the notion of Ukraine joining NATO while a conflict is still in progress. Instead, he believes that the worst-case scenario would be for NATO and the West to gradually withdraw their support for Ukraine over the course of months or years of war allowing Putin to gradually strengthen his control over the country's east. This, he claimed, would damage NATO's reputation on the world stage and send a message to Russia that other non-NATO members are fair game. The decision in the West will be over whether to attempt and push for a favorable outcome, i.e., Ukrainian triumph and territorial integrity, or opt for some type of settlement, according to the author, this could put a stop to the fighting, 
but it would jeopardize Ukraine's territorial integrity and send a message that Russia can use violence to further its interests. In his opinion, the best-case scenario would involve Ukraine finally repelling Russian forces with Western assistance, regaining its lost territory after February 2022, and committing to democratic reforms to eventually join NATO. According to him, doing so would strengthen NATO's viability, show that Europe is reluctant to support Russian expansionism, solidify European security, and create a cohesive deterrent against Russian aggression in the future. I think a lot depends on when Ukraine joins, dear, Smith continued. The best outcome, in my opinion, would be to fast-track Ukrainian accession to membership after the war is over, extending the benefits of membership against any future Russian aggression. It is clear that it won't be until the war is over, either as a result of Ukraine retaking all occupied territory or else through a negotiated agreement. The worst-case scenario is that things continue as they have since 2008, when Ukraine has been promised membership, but nothing is being done to make it happen. Under those conditions, Putin or a successor in charge of Russia would be motivated to rebuild its military might and launch another offensive.